period. Show your mind, break it hot, top it slide. You know what we like, yeah. Get up, you don't wanna miss us. In the mix, it's official. It's official. Big facts, no cap. Yeah. Where you at? Yeah. It's time to kick back. It's the mix. Welcome to the mix. Now, we got a great show for you guys tonight. Sanger songwriter Pink Sweats is getting into the mix with us soon. And a little later, our girl Leah Henry is back with some celebrity news, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Talk to me, Shorty. What you got for? All right, right y'all. So let's just get right into it. So hip hop is approaching its 50th anniversary in 2023. And over the weekend, rap legends came together in the Bronx to break ground on the new hip hop museum. Artists like Nas, Fat Joe, and LL Cool J were there with golden shovels to kick off the construction. So Nas is also teaming up with Mass Appeal CEO, Sasha Jenkins, and launching a series called Hip Hop 50 on Showtime. It will be a collection of original programming that is set to run for three years to celebrate this huge milestone for hip hop. So, you know, I just had to ask you guys, when you think of the hip hop greats, who are your top three that you feel should be honored in this museum? Mm. Only three? Only, only, only three, three. Only three. Yeah. That's only three. tough. Oh, That's okay. tough to bring it down to only three. Like, you I'm can't even last. really. No. Okay, I mean, so man. should I just go first then? Yeah, yes, I'm going to go, go ahead, last Jess. All right, ahead, Jess. so I just have to do the, the big three. And my big three is Nikki, Wayne, and Drake. YMCMB, those are the big three. I feel like you cannot, when it comes to hip hop and when it comes to rap, you, you can't forget them. I mean, Drake just won Artist of the Decade by right. Billboard. Wait, was that Little a picture Wayne? of Missy Elliott, y'all? Was that a picture of Missy Elliott or Nicki Minaj? They put Missy think, up in there? I'm sorry, I think those, those were jazz picks because I was going to say <laughs> Missy, Wayne, and Drake. <laughs> Uh, I think okay. we had a little mix up with the reduction, but those are my three and Jazz, they didn't show Jazz's pictures. Oh, okay. Mistake. So they threw Nikki in. Okay, got it. I mean, Missy's okay. great too. Missy's a hip hop yeah. icon. There we go. Now, 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 now we got the picks up. Now we got it. Yeah, there we go. That's my big Hey, so, so my picks are obviously very close to jazz is I just replaced Nikki with Missy. Now I was gonna put Nikki in there, but I felt like for me, Missy has always been like the blueprint. And then yeah. I feel like, you know, Wayne, he's just a lyrical genius. And I feel like Drake, you know, he never misses. So that's, that's why true. I chose those. Wow, y'all years. giving Drake his roses early. That's a lot. See, that's why yeah, I love the mix. A lot of people don't give Drake his roses because it's kind of like I feel like he's kind of like LeBron where he's so good and we don't appreciate him in his moment, you know. Right, so, right. man, props yeah. to the Mitz crew, man. That's yeah. why I like watching this show. Hey, <laughs> OK, we got to get the baby. I'm, I'm interested to hear Jamie's because, you oh, know, God. Yeah, come on, Jamie. I think y'all will be proud of me for this. So I did say Nikki. I said Wayne and I put in J. Cole. Because oh, I, I like that. Oh. Okay. See, see, Jamie, I'm not gonna lie. I thought you were gonna hit us with Lil Uzi, Ver, Gunna, all that. You had me, me too, a little worried. Me too. I, I love them. I love those guys, but I didn't know where you were going with it. I mean, it's talk through. We have to get a little more serious about it. So I gotta <laughs> give it to the OGs. You know what I'm saying? And you know, yeah. like you guys said, Nikki, wait, you said the OGs, Jamie. My OGs. <laughs> <laughs> her those are her OGs. For my OGs. Yeah. Okay, don't guys. That, don't that make you feel old when she say that? Though? That's, That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> we gotta hear you, um, both for the guys and time. Yeah, okay, I'm first of all, I gotta say, Jamie, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for like not making this look bad. You didn't put any crazy <laughs> young rappers on there. Beautiful choices, beautiful choices. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go with, and this was really tough for me to decide, Kendrick, Pac, and Biggie. Mm -hmm. I got to go. Okay. I got to go with the three. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The real, the real OGs in there, Pac and Biggie. Yeah. Absolutely. I had to give it to, the, you know, the best to ever do it in the game. Biggie and Pac, you know what I mean? I don't think anybody can dispute that. I think for everybody, that's like a one and two situation. Number one, number mm -hmm. two. I'm not going to say who number one is. I ain't going to say who number two is. I'm going to yeah, just leave it at that. that. And then okay. uh, I had to put my boy Kendrick in there because I think Kendrick is the coldest MC of my generation. Like, I just think the way he is able to just bring us hits, but also be um, socially conscious as well and giving us real lyrical content. So, you okay. know, that, that's, that's my top three. I think my top three is the best, you know what I'm saying? All right. 
I like right, that. Let's hear I yours. like that. And you know what? I knew y'all was going to hit it on the head. That's why I got mine, because I was like, I know somebody's going to throw Drizzy in there. I know somebody's going to throw Nikki in there. We're going to get Pac and Biggie and Missy. So I went more business-wise and longevity. So okay. my pick is Jay-Z, my yeah. pop's mm-hmm. Master P, and Lil okay. Wayne. Oh, yeah. And yeah, okay. okay. I okay. that. And but I had my my honorary was close. I had Uncle Snoop Dogg in there because he has mm-hmm. an amazing yeah. career. Oh. You know, I don't think he get his roses enough. And For Queen, sure. Queen Nicki Minaj is right behind him. And I have Lil Kim right there. So like that's yeah. my okay. 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 But yeah, I love okay. these ones because Lil Wayne, I feel if this is an era, right? I see Michael Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. And I see like Hove is kind of like that Michael Jordan, you know, everybody look up to him, everybody know him. My pops is like that Kobe. He's the hardest worker and he don't have to be the most talented, but he was able to make a name for himself and build a hell of a brand. And then you got Wayne, who's just LeBron, you know, step mixed with Stephen Curry, mixed with, you know, James Harden, where he could literally do anything. And I just want to give those three their roses because I don't think they get enough of their roses. Like we give it to Pac, we give it to Biggie, but they not here to smell them. So I wanted to give it to those three while they're here so they could smell them. So I take my hats off to hold my pops and what little Wheezy, man. Absolutely. Okay. Um, R- Romeo, I love how you always break the rules. You said top five for okay, me. I was I was it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, so on that note, I'm gonna move on to the next. I saw on Friday, Apple Music's Rap Life Live took over Clark Atlanta University, y'all, and the lineup was fire. They had Moneybag Yo, Sweetie, and Little Dirt perform in pre-recorded videos that were filmed all over the campus. Now, I think it's dope that Rap, that rap Life is bringing this event around to HBCUs, and I like the way that they mix the performances with some great discussions with the students, and also it ended with Merrick. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms sharing some personal reflections on what Clark Atlanta means to her. So mm-hmm. I want to know, what do you guys think? And have you all checked out um, to Ebro's Rap Life playlist on Apple Music? Because mm-hmm. I have- all I got to say, this is the future, you know. This is why, you know, God give us these talents so that we could use our talents to educate mm-hmm. each other. And I just love what they're doing. Like, I take my hat off to them because this is how we use our gifts and our talents to make the world a better place. Shout out to all the HBCUs too. Yeah, yeah. And it made me one like, I wish I was in school so I could be a part of this type of stuff. Like, you know, you know I, I kind of feel like in like 2021, the, the end of 2020, it's like HBCU love. Like I've just been hearing so mm-hmm. much buzz about going to an HBCU more than I've ever heard in my life. Like it started off with me hearing that, you know, Percy Miller was going to an HBCU, which I think just set off this beautiful little trend uh and i hope it continues and the fact that they bring like the music artists to the hbcus like it just shows so much love and it just hopefully so many more black people are gonna go to more hbcus in the future that's what i was gonna say i love that rap life is doing this because like i i went to a hbcu and a pwi and when i went to the hbcu we always had like the local artists for homecoming, which I loved. I always had fun. But then when I went to the PWI, we had Ray Schwimmer. We had Wale. Like we had those major artists. So I think it's dope how Ebro is kind of giving the HBCUs that, that you know, those major artists as well, because the budgets really aren't there for that usually. So I like how, how they're doing that. Usually HBCUs mainstream now. That's what we put in that right. light on. That part. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That That's part. True. Now, I wonder if this might be one of the last pre-recorded concerts due to COVID because everything is opening back up and live music will be in full effect this summer, as we talked about on the show before. Now, but what I'm hearing, which is scaring me about all of these venues having vaccinated and unvaccinated sections. I found a tweet showing Madison Square Garden in NYC this weekend with the different sections. And some events won't even let you attend if you're not vaccinated. So the BET Awards announced that they will be back on June 27th with a fully vaccinated audience. So uh, I guess that means that your boy Anton will not be attending that show. <laughs> and on that note, Anton, we don't got enough time. You won't be going because you got to be vaccinated. I maybe won't be there, but we know Jamie going to be there. With that being said, we got to take a break, okay? But look, we got Pink Sweats getting into the mix with us when we come back. Keep it locked right here. Only on Fox Soul, baby. Jamie right. going to be turned up at the 
Welcome back to the mix, you guys. Okay, so our first guest is an amazing singer-songwriter who's tearing up the charts with his latest single, At My Worst, which has over 200 million streams and over 1.5 million TikTok creations. Please do not play with him. He's here today to talk about his latest album, Pink Planet, which you can go download right now. And let's welcome the artist with the most comfortable name in the game, Pink Sweat Into The Mix. What's hey. up, Pink? Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Yes. I like that introduction. That was fire. The okay. Most comfortable I, I, name. I, I, yeah, you know, I, I had to get you right. We love the name. Pink Sweat Into The Mix. That would be my rap name. It's, it's me trying to steal your name. <laughs> okay, so. It's copywritten, I, Pink. Yeah, yes, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. Okay, <laughs> pink sweat. Don't play with my name. Okay, so I have to get into something big off top because every time someone comes into the mix, I pretty much go to you guys' Instagram, and I saw that you recently got engaged. So for one, congratulations! Hey, so hey. hey I love okay. love, baby. Okay. <laughs> y'all already know I want to get into your business I would just like to know how did you ask how did you propose we want the whole when where how who is <laughs> <laughs> so we did um I kind of set it up on her birthday we went to DR Dominican Republic and um she kind of thought it was like a birthday thing and like we had our friends come out and stuff like that and then I just kind of, you know, we did like a toast and then I got on my knee. Yeah. And, I mean, it was fun. It was super exciting because we was all lit. And like it's everybody awesome. else knew she didn't really know. So it was dope. <laughs> it's the pink suit for me. Yeah, like, that's what it is for me too. <laughs> that's cool. Bro, I, ain't gonna lie. That's what I lost that on the plane. Suit though? That pink suit is it, homie. I need to you I lost need it on the plane, time. Huh? I lost it on the plane. Dang. Wow. wow, the proposal suit, you don't got it? I left it on the plane and they never gave it back. Somebody probably broke you that, John. <laughs> and that thing might be on eBay tomorrow. <laughs> eBay. So, engagement, wedding. Okay, I'm going to be more nosy than Zonique was. Have you picked a date and a location? Is it going to be like in the DR? Because that's where you propose. Are we invited? Right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't we don't know how we're gonna do it yet just because you know all the COVID stuff is like kind of just now calming down. So we know it's gonna be next year, but um it's probably be like on a day when we kind of first officially started dating. So oh okay, and then it's safe to say that pink will be in the wedding color palette, right? Yo, you would think, right? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know because it's like I don't I don't like enforcing my art mm. into like my relationship because yeah. it's like I mean she know me for real so I don't want to be like bringing all this energy to her on, on yeah. the wedding day but it might be how, how did you know she was the one bro the one man I feel like I was going through a lot of stuff when we had met originally like years ago and I always felt like she was mad cool like every now and then you meet like a person you just feel like like obviously if she would have called me up and said yo pull up I would have pulled up but the energy was always like mutual respect and like we would work on stuff and she just I don't know she was like one of the homies and like my friends we all kind of got along and I think later when we started dating it made it so much easier for us to like really dive in because we so was y'all had friends. matching energy started off as friends you never rushed into nothing nah and we kind of like like real homies like i know that she was she was dead she know i was dead like well you yeah, know so that's, that's, the, that's best. the key right there yeah, so i was about to say that's the best type real of love homies. in the world that when you're friends first you know and then yeah. you build that that other type of love relationship so clearly you're surrounded by love, but not only in your music, because also in your life, um, I found that your birthday is on the most loving day of the year on Valentine's Day. So would you um, say it was your destiny to be a love song game, to be in the love song game? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably, man. God had a plan for sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's mad random when I think about it sometimes. I'm like, dang, I was born on Valentine's Day and I just got this affinity for love songs. Mm. I don't know where that came mm. from. That's, uh, sure. that's called random, like you said, God already had the plan. Yep. Yeah, he had destiny before you came here. Mm -hmm. uh, he was putting the clues already. If I was paying exactly. attention early, I would have knew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with the guy, man. Okay, so here's uh here's a real question though, because that has to be rough when you're in a relationship and your birthday is on a holiday when you're supposed to be providing the gifts and paying for dinner. So I want to know what's the main celebration at your house on February 14th? Is it your B day? Or does it go more so V Day went out? Yeah, I want to know too. How, you got a, a national yeah. birthday. I'm just saying, you celebrating Valentine's or the birthday? How does that work? What are we doing, dude? Oh, okay. It's his birthday. She let me get the birthday. Oh. 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 That's love. That's so love. it's Pink Day. It's not V Day, it's Pink Day. <laughs> <laughs> but we always end up doing so. Like, I'm going to always think of something to do for her, but. Like, she'll, like, throw me a party or whatever for my birthday. And, like, she just don't really expect anything. But if I do something, she would obviously appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I got to say, because I feel like we're just all up in your business right now. So <laughs> one of your, I must say that one of your amazing talents is your songwriting skills. And you've been pretty successful in that world. But what made you want to become an artist as well? Because let's be honest, we all know songwriting is where the money is really at. So what made you want to become an artist as well? Um, funny enough, because of the money, you just said that, I always felt like you can't control your income when you're a songwriter in the beginning because you're kind of subject to whatever artists want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm saying, like, yo, I'm tired of, like, I don't want to mimic nobody, you know what I mean? But in the songwriting, a lot of times you end up mimicking trends because, like, you know what I mean? Somebody, whoever the hot songwriter is, somebody could come to you like, yo, I want a song like this. And, like, eventually you just get tired of it. Like, yo, fall back. I'm going to listen listen to this song. And they're like, ah, I don't know. It's, it don't got the Migos flow like it's supposed to. I'm like, dude. So I just start putting out my own music. That's that's really what got me to being an artist because I was like, I want to be more in control of my art, Yourself. my finances, mm -hmm. my creativity. Dang, that's some gems right there because a lot of people don't know it is pros and cons to everything. Some people may think, well, you make more money songwriting while the artists out there on tour, this and that. But the artists do get more creativity where the songwriters, <laughs> a lot of times, they just got to write it. And then however the artists flip it, that's what it is. So, man, you dropping some gems on here for the young future, you know, hit makers out there in the world. Absolutely. And artists do be taking percentage too. Like, they <laughs> and take, do. They're gonna get theirs. They be like, yo, <laughs> let me get 50%. You're like, 50? You wasn't even in the room when I made the song. Like, <laughs> the game changing now. Artists ain't playing. Oh, you know, back in the day, a lot of artists are getting taken advantage of. So they trying to eat too. That part. Yeah, right. but it's, it's good for a lot of people to just learn, learn the game from the bottom and work your way up. And that's that's the one thing I always tell people, just learn each part, because then you know how it's supposed to go. Like, mm. nobody yeah. can get one over on you. Now, I, well, I know my co-hosts are going to be like, girl, leave Justin alone. But I believe you were in the credits on the new Justin Bieber deluxe album. Yeah, y'all knew it was coming. So can you please tell me how the, this relationship came together? And like, what was it like to work with Justin? Because I love him. <laughs> Yo, so I think Justin DM me like a couple years ago, like two years ago. And um, from there, we just kind of hit it off. Like we were just like, I never even hit him up to work really. Like we would just be texting or like FaceTime and just talk about life, talk about like God and like family and stuff like that. And then one day I was in, I happened to be in LA cause I had just moved out of LA and he was like, you know what I mean? Moving around or whatever. He was like, yo bro, like you gotta pull up on me. So yeah, it just kind of came up that way. Wait, look, I gotta jump in here real quick before y'all ask the next question. So Jay slid in the DMs, right? Yeah. 
No, look, okay, so look, this is my point. If that was a female artist slid in the DMs, people going to think, oh, it's all this and that. It got to be personal. <laughs> when, a, when the same set slide in the DM is all good, that's why I be trying to tell people, look what happened from Justin sliding in the DM. Beautiful music. True. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Stop trying to, well, stop trying to justify sliding in the DM. Right? You trying to justify that. I don't exactly. know why that that's, that's, hard, girl. that's his hey. only point, Okay. <laughs> All right, Zoe, I'm going to let you live because you, you made a beautiful baby and a happy relationship from, so it works both ways. You're right. Okay, let me take a drink. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so went there and she brought it up. I have a question for you, Pink, because it has been an ongoing debate, debate on our show for weeks now. Do you, you think go. Justin Bieber's last album should be considered R&B? The Justice album? Uh, I got two answers. Politically, okay. no. But sound-wise, yes. Ooh, I like that. Stop playing hey. with his answer, man. Hey. Hey. answer. Hey. I like that. Hey. When you say sound-wise, do you mean the sound of Justin Bieber's voice or like the production? That and mean if he wasn't white, like you saying, Tony, it'll be R&B regardless. But politically, because he's <laughs> white, it's not R&B. Yeah, <laughs> politically. And it's not, and to be, to be real, like, I genuinely think that he's drawn so much inspiration and he just want that probably accolade to be like, yo, this where this what I love. Like I love RB. And like for him, that's probably like a big accomplishment if he could get that award or whatever. Like in that awards in that category. And you know, it's just politically it, it's it's that way because it wouldn't be fair. Like if you think about RB, people who really not just fans, but you actually look at numbers and analytics and things. R&B is not at the top numbers wise. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't see tons of R&B singers that's 16 and 22 with millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, we're kind of like floating. You got a couple of us who are getting money or whatever, but it wouldn't be fair if Justin Bieber could be considered R&B because then you just pooping on everybody. Like you literally okay. got you know what I mean? And it, it just, it wouldn't be fair. And I, I think politically, that's probably why they do it that way, just to give, you know, the culture a shot first before you just be like, oh, here, R&B, right to JB. You know what I mean? Well, Zonique, I got to keep it real with you. Over the weekend, I definitely was at a party and Peaches came on. And I have to tell you. It's a vibe. It's, it's, it's a vibe. Not only is it a vibe, but that, that's an R&B song. That, that's an R&B song. <laughs> I, I agree. Hey, Yo, I hey, Ty, hey. Yeah, Jay, that's that's a magical day. That, that for I sure. Agree. Song. I ain't Thank you, Ty. Thank you. I mean, I was going to say, I just feel like there's been enough, you know, like R&B artists in the mix who have agreed with me at this point that, you know, you should have maybe been, you know, like, yeah, it's given R&B, but you want to fight me all day that, you know. No, if he was, if he was black for sure. It would be r &B. And I only know that from real life experience because when I first came out as an artist, I thought that my music was just music. I didn't even know it was r and I wasn't trying to make any genre. I just did it. And people thought, a couple people thought it was Justin Bieber. And it was like I was getting certain looks when they thought I was white. But then people would meet me and be like, oh, yeah, R&B. Throw that nigga in R&B. I'm like, bro. <laughs> you thought I was hey, That's a great point, though. Very that's true. a great point, because if you just listen to the music and you don't worry about um, the looks or the person, the color, it's like, what is it? And that's yeah. what you just said, Tom. You was in the club and you was vibing to the song. That's R&B. Really if really you just was. listen to the music. Yep, yep, I really was. So we have to get back to your music, uh, Mr. Pink Sweats. I got to talk about your album, Pink Planet, because I've been playing it in the crib, and oh my God, the vibes are just, they're crazy. I love how this album doesn't really put itself into one genre or style of music, the entire listen. There's so many great, dope vibes coming off of this project, but I would like to know what songs mean the most to you on the album? On um, Pink Planet, the album, so I got one, it's um, Pink City. And then another one is called Pink Family. All the songs are not pink, but people did not hear it. Those are just the two. Because it's like Pink City. I wrote that song 
And like, I remember like I was crying one time because I like the way I did the lyrics and stuff. I could just I could feel all the things that I've been through. Every, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, every test, trial, tribulation kind of vibe where it's like I always had this vision since I was a kid of like creating my own world, like mentally that I can like, you know, project out for everybody else to kind of, you know, step in and come by with me. Yeah. So it was that was like a, a joyful moment for me that song and Pink City go hard, hard. Yeah. it go hard. Pink City, that's my joint. It's super soulful, you know what I mean? It, I feel like it represents my city real hard. And then Pink Family, like I grew up in church, like my whole family sing, and that was the last song I added to the album. And it was kind of like I got my family in the mix, whereas in I, I almost missed that. And I, I kind of was like so grateful for the time of like the world slowing down. Cause I was just so in the, you know what I mean? In the go of it, I almost missed that moment. And I was like, yo, I gotta get my, I gotta get my family together. Cause this is what I grew up doing. Mm. Like my mom mm. sing, my brother sing, my aunt sing. I'm like, I always tell people, I'm not even the best singer in my family. Like, so it's like, I wanted to get them a, a moment to shine. So when they going back to church, Yo, did you hear this song? I was on that. You know what I mean? So that meant a lot to me. That's beautiful. That's where your blessings come from. Like when you honor yeah. your father, especially, you know what I'm saying? You get your family, you know, some love as well, and you bring them up. That's that's how the universe just continues uh-huh. to throw blessings on your life, man. It's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to take us to a quick break, y'all. But Pink Sweats is sticking right, is sticking around and getting into a couple of few juicy topics with us. And I'm just gonna give y'all a little preview. Can guys and girls really just be friends? It's mm-hmm. me with the <laughs> now y'all know I can't wait to <laughs> it's me like making it dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, yeah, y'all I, like know, I can't, I can't. Exactly. Yeah, I like your girl already, Pink. She sounds like me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we're just gonna. <laughs> Take it right to break and stay right here on Fox Soul. Um, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the mix, you guys. So we're back with singer-songwriter Pink Sweats, and he's going to get into a couple topics with us. But look, Pink, you might want to get ready because it might get a little heated up in here, okay? I'm ready. I'm ready. So, <laughs> so let me read this tweet that we found. It says, red flag number one, not being able to have friends of the opposite sex without a valid reason. If you can't trust each other to have friends of the opposite sex, there's obviously a problem. So Pink, you're our guest tonight. So I want to start it off with you. What do you think about that? I feel like the way it was worded, it worked for, it worked for that person. But like the reality is you don't want anybody, whether that's me or my girl, I don't need nobody that kind of energy close to me because Number mm. one, that's how me and her met. So why I'm about to give her somebody else the same kind of energy and space. And like friendships take time and energy to maintain. So like mm. if I'm maintaining somebody else's time and energy, that's to me less time that I got going on with my, my lady. Yeah, mm. look. That, that is a look, great answer. <laughs> you know, look, y'all, you listen to what he said, how they worded that, that worked out for them because they said, so yeah. what, say that one more time, Jazz, just one more time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Red flag number one, not being able to have friends of the opposite sex without a valid reason. If you can't trust each other to have friends of the oh, opposite that's sex, that's it right there, Jazz. Uh, you don't okay. got to say nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we trust our boo. We don't trust the dudes. Right. Or if it's the opposite sex, how are you going to trust the other person? But look, Tom, before you get into it, I'm it's both sides. You want to go. I was about. Yeah. No, because. I grew up in the industry, and my thing is, I feel we live in a world where uh, we stop so many amazing relationships because of this opposite sex. If it's a girl and she's this talented person, you can't go work with this person because it may turn to something else, vice mm-hmm. versa. And I was watching this day in Warren Buffett. He was like, do you realize how much smarter the world would be if we let it women have those same jobs as men? So I'm all about just an equal um, playing field when it comes to business and everything but when it comes to your relationship you got to just have those boundaries I feel there's some people who's good at having those boundaries and being friends with the opposite sex but I feel there's also some people like Pink said they know they're just trying to get in there to do what they want to do so it's just about 
I think it's unrealistic to say that you're not going to be friends or your partner can't be friends with the opposite sex. I do think that is a toxic, toxic trait. That's, yes. Like, that's yeah, territory. but who, you can't that's tell somebody what to do. Yeah. How is it that you're going to, first of all, work in this world and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, for me, for instance, like if I'm dating somebody and I won't allow them to have um, a friend of the opposite sex, I just think that that's just unreal. It's unrealistic. Like, it's not real. Like, obviously, you have a problem. You have trust issues. And that's the biggest thing that we need to talk about. Because yes. if you have somebody, we even yes. rock yes. To what Pink said when he was like, friendships take away time for my relationship. Not every friendship takes speaking every day. Like, I know for me, I have friends of the opposite sex and we can go to lunch like once a month, once every other month, and we're still cool. Pink, you listening to this? Gen Z, Gen Z. <laughs> I don't even go with my homies one on one. Right. I think, I mean, I am only 19, so I'm younger. So obviously I'm not in like a more serious relationship like you guys are looking for. But I think for me in my life, it's like, why not? You're young and I don't want to cut off my social circle. That part. Because yeah, you don't want to yeah. sacrifice for love. But guess what? Everybody ain't good. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, think it boils, I think it boils down to what Tom was saying, trust and maturity. If you trust your partner and you're in a mature relationship with them, you should know. Look, you can go out with your friends of the opposite sex and I'll trust you. Now, once you, once you give me, I'm this type, you give me a reason not to trust you, I'll never trust you again. Yeah. So That's now you can't have friends of the opposite sex. Guys, can I life. say something? Can I say something? Guys, I love that. Can I say something? Zanik for 200. Please, can I say something right quick? <laughs> go ahead, Romeo. Romeo. Thank you, because I know Zoe gonna close it off so beautifully and elegantly. But look, y'all are all right. At the end of the day, like Pink said, the question was set up for you to fail. It was set up for us to debate and talk about all of this black and white when it's so much gray in there. So it just depends the person. We all love different. We all want different kinds of love. And it's so much gray area. It's not just black and white, but to use them for two. So, wait, wait, so Romeo, are you cool with your girl having multiple um, friends that are men? I'm on the side with Pink. I'm just saying. I'm on the <laughs> side with pink work. Yo, what? so look, look, hey. let me let me let me clear this up real quick to be real. It's not, it's like what I even call a friend, I guess it's different. Like if you casually hang with someone, to me, that's not no friend. Like if you I'm talking about people you telling your business to, you know what I mean? You rapping to about your real life problems and goals and all. It's like I just think I number one, I'm a guy, so I know guys. Every girl in here, you had a dude who was your friend at one point try to say, let's be more than friends. Pink about to you write that song. Write that happy. song after this. Right. So it's like, it's not even about, it's not even about her because at the end of the day, I already know she on her, on her P's and Q's, but it's like, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do if she come to me with some energy that he overstepping the boundaries because if there's a like, if you put somebody in front of the line, they gonna cross it eventually. And, and if dudes wait thirty years to do it, you be thirty exactly. years married, you step over that line like, yo, what's up? Yeah, Man, some I see to why he write love songs. He get it. It's the yeah. boundary thing. You don't want to put yourself in that position. Why put yourself in that position if you know you got something? Now, if you don't have something, like Jamie said, you want to live your life, go do it. But if you know you got something real solid, you don't got to put yourself in that position for somebody to cross that boundary. Then I'm going to have to knock them upside the head and get the no limit soldiers. You feel me? <laughs> oh, can I just say, can I just, you know, just put in my little opinion real quick. Um, I feel like I'm comfortable with my person having friends that he's known for a long Long time now if this is your friend for years you knew this person before I even came in the picture and I've been able to witness the relationship and feel like oh okay it ain't too much going on here then yeah cool but I'm not cool with my boyfriend having meeting new friends new women yeah, no. and becoming friends yeah I'm not yeah. yeah I'm not with none of that like you know I'm cool with the friends that you don't have for years you know, I still got to witness it. That's that's still a key for me. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just friends yeah. can even you know friends like are human. Like 
Exactly. Bro, so you, like, you, you, you don't play at all. So I don't see Ty. Ty. have a new nothing. He can't even you, see the women on Instagram, right? Yeah, you know, you know, I'm I'm checking everything. <laughs> you know what? I, I think we all came to the conclusion that it's you and your partner's relationship. As long as you have an open conversation about it and you both understand the boundaries and you come to a solid conclusion for what's best for your relationship, go for it. That part. Yeah. That, I like that, Jamie. I like that. I like that. We do have a topic, and I think this one will spark some debate. I don't know. I'm kind of excited. But anyway, so (laughs) I don't know if y'all heard about A-Rod, who recently announced that he teamed up with a company that is putting out a line of concealer for men. Like him, men who want to feel good about their skin. I get that. And it's called the blur stick. It sparked conversation around men wearing makeup. And this is why I love that we have Romeo and Anton and now Pink here to get their perspective. So I'm going to go to you guys. I'm going to go to Pink first. Would you feel comfortable wearing concealer or like makeup in general, basically? Uh, me as an entertainer, I'm like, I, you know what I mean? I'm actually in a shoot a movie and stuff. I'm okay with it. I'm still getting okay with it now. But like... Yeah, I get it. But for everyday guys, I'm not going to lie. I think there's, like, if you a man and you fall asleep on a girl pillow you just met, and then you got the joint on there, you got to, for everyday guys, like, I don't know. But, like, for people in the industry, I get it. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I would say the same thing. I think, like, growing being an artist, I'm used to always having makeup on, you know, when I'm doing a shoot or I'm doing a movie or a commercial or what, what have you. Um, even when I have to do my own like auditions on self tapes, I actually, if I have a blemish or something, I'll put a little, you know, concealer on because it's for the you camera. You're talking about everyday life, though, y'all. Everyday life. Are we going to put on <laughs> some concealer? Yeah, that's that's a lot. Lot. Please. We're not talking that's about your profession. Hey. I think that there's nothing wrong with the dude putting on some like eyeliner every day or like, you know what I'm saying, putting on a little something every day. I mean, look at the rock stars. The rock stars do this shit all the time. They put on the heavy makeup and they look fly as fuck. As about, like, a guy who has a nine to five job. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. Yeah. He wakes up, he's like, let me, put, let me put concealer on, and then like leaves the crib. Like that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you know what's crazy? At the end of the day, um, this one of my homies was like, Man, girls got this and that to make themselves beautiful. They put on heels, they taller, and this and that. <laughs> And I'm just mm-hmm. like, what do guys got? They complain when a guy don't got no hair and all of this. So I just feel like this one of those, one of those situations for those dudes who trying to catch up with their shawty. But um, for every date, you know, that's not for me. Like if you're an artist, you're making yeah. movies and stuff, cool. But I know who will be down with it. I know who need to be the spokesperson for this. Scott Disick. I was watching the Kardashian show a few years ago and he was in there taking the Kardashian's makeup. So I'm just saying, man, but he was like, I'm getting, right. I'm getting pictured a lot. I'm getting pictured a lot. I'm trying to look good for the I mean, camera. Yeah. It's that simple. Oh, my God. All right. so, mention, what the heck they want to do. If they want to wake up and put on a concealer and have a beautiful woman on their side, if they want to cool with it, live life. Everything yeah. is like breaking the rules, especially when it comes to fluidity and, and your style and fashion. Do whatever you want to do, because, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that, Anton, just not my man. My man will not Same. Yes. me. But on, Same. on that note, Ooh, that's not let's fair. take a quick break. But we do want to thank Pink Sweats for stopping by and getting into the mix with us tonight. Be sure to go get his album, Pink Planet, available everywhere. You can buy it and stream it. But we'll be right back here on Fox Soul, you guys. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Welcome back to the show. Y'all know her. We all love her. Miss Leah is finally back with us tonight, but we get to turn the tables a little bit on her and get the tea about her new podcast. So let's welcome Miss Leah Henry back into the mix. Hey, Hey, y'all. Hey, Leah. We missed you. Leah, Leah, welcome back. You know, I'm so glad to shine a light on your new project tonight. But before you tell us about that, I just got to say that last topic we was talking about with the little, the men, what is it called? The concealer for men. Concealer for men. You know, one of our producers said he'll be mad if one of his homies came to his house and slept on his bed and had concealer all over. It's already hard enough when you got a girl over and all that. You're trying to clean that up. So I'm just saying, I feel you. Do what you want to do. 
but I can't be cleaning up my homie's concealer off my cheeks. That's all I'm I saying. Am now back to you. <laughs> Leah Henry, welcome to the <laughs> mix, Shawty. What's going on with you? What's like, good? <laughs> Tell us about this new project. Okay, y'all. Um, you know, at the Lemonade Stand, we do things grand. So I've got with my homegirl, Candace Dillard Bassett from Potomac Housewives, and we started a podcast called So That's What We're Doing. And what we're doing is a little bit of everything, a little bit of mess, a little bit of shade, but a lot of real life. You know, she's on reality TV, Romeo, Zoe, Jazz, y'all y'all can relate. There's a lot that people don't get to see. And so, you know, Candace and I wanted to really show people an inside look at our lives behind radio, behind media, behind reality TV, and give people the real and so that's that's what we're doing wow yeah we love that incredibly you, Leah. i love that you're doing this and with candace because i love her too um so on the podcast you opened up that you're looking for love baby you're looking for <laughs> love okay hopefully you do that no working sealer probably because i feel like i know you <laughs> <laughs> you also said that you are into dating an older man which i was surprised to hear now What's this date, daddy? Like, it, I heard this date, daddy, the hashtag you guys started. What, what is this? Please explain it. So here's the thing. You know, Candace is, is saying that, you know, love comes in all shapes, all sizes, all ages. And she thinks that I would be successful if I dated a man, you know, 10 years my senior. So we're calling it data daddy. And we're using the hashtag to find me a daddy to date. And um, I'm not going to lie, you know, she she's married to a white man. So we, we talked about interracial dating. Um, and I've been honest with her. It feels like um, a long episode of Get Out, you know, the movie. So I have... I got, I got some personal work to do, you know? Right, I do. But, right. you know, that's why we're doing Data Daddy. Tom, don't look like that. I'm being honest. Can I get out? Right. When they tried to kill him. They tried to so, kill you. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> Leah, would you, would you date? So, you don't want to date younger than you? Because let me say, my mom is dating 20 years younger. Well, not dating. They're married now. 20 years mm -hmm. younger. He's 20 years younger mm -hmm. than her. And he's a great guy. So she's in her 50s. He's in his 30s, but he's a he's a great guy. So would you ever date, like, younger? Okay. okay but see, see, your mom is, like, older. I feel like men, you got to get right to 30 before their heads be in the right place. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. like, right now, I'm 27. Yeah. If I was to date, like, a 22-year-old, what do I have in common oh, yeah. with, with oh, somebody no. in college or someone who's 22? So, maybe when I get older, but, you know, Candace is like, I think you would do well if you dated a daddy, because I was saying, like, you know, Sweetie's daddy is fine as hell. I would date yeah. somebody like that. You know, yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I've that, heard that. So we know, you better shoot that shot. Let yeah. me hide my daddy. Huh. Okay. <laughs> dad, dad, don't no, 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 if no, no, Leah no. come over. No, I didn't no. know this about her. Uh uh, I didn't know this about you, Miss Leah. You was looking a little bit too comfortable with my dad in that interview. Now that I think about first it, first of all, um, first of all, I don't dip and do the family lies, Romeo. You were enough of the Miller for me, honey. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Virtual hug. Virtual hug. Virtual hug. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you say? <laughs> I love, I love Leah. Leah. I love you so much. No concealer, not younger than you. So then why don't you tell us what you are looking for? Because someone might be watching that might be perfect for you. So let's I make do. it happen. Yeah. All right, first of all, we all know that I'm a part of the Plus Size People Association. So you got to have and like a little bit of curve. You know what I'm saying? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, I, like yeah. a, I like an intelligent man. I like a man to teach me something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of men out here trying to teach you something. Like, I want to mm -hmm. learn, okay? Like, teach, take me somewhere nice. Like, teach me something I ain't never done before. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Um, oh. And also, too, like, I think that, you know, you guys know this. When you are on platforms and people see you, um, it's definitely harder to determine what people are really talking to you for. And so I think that's definitely a hesitation for me. Um, and so I just want somebody who I can tell is genuine and real. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I I'll let Romeo vet him since he knows. Right, Rome? That sounds like me, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I need to duplicate myself or so. I'm just saying. <laughs> you get a Romeo. You get a Romeo. <laughs> oh, please. Okay, wait. Before you go, Leah, can I put you to work for a little bit? Do you mind? I mean, let's Period. Do it. Okay, so I know you have some celebrity news for us. Please give us, get us right. 
<laughs> now, you know, I had to spill the lemonade before I go. So I'm going to give you all a quick recap of the Billboard Music Awards if you didn't get a chance to see. So the Star Studded Night honored some of the biggest artists in the world, all hosted by my man in my head, Nick Jonas. Anyway, um, there were some really good performances by DJ Khaled and her, the Migos, Doja Cat, SZA, The Weeknd, and even a special performance by Alicia Keys, celebrating 20 years since her first album, Songs in A Minor. The biggest winner of the night was The Weeknd taking home 10 awards, including top artists, hashtag take that Grammys, okay? Now, Drake took home top streaming artist and was honored with the Artist of the Decade Award with his son Adonis by his side. Drake became the most decorated artist in a Billboard Award history. I know that's right, okay? Now, for Into the Mix, Trade of Truth, he was presented um, with the Billboard Changemaker Award by Tina Knowles Lawson. So that was really dope because I'm glad he's getting his shine. And um, um, Doja Cat took home top R&B female. Make People was eye-eyeing that a little bit. Don't I don't make know that about face. that. Mm, I don't know. Um, and finally, Pop Smoke won big as well, winning top rap album, um, rap male artist, new artist, and overall top rap artist. So what do you guys think about this Black Excellence? Because the big winners of the night had a little melanin to them, and I like that. Okay, yeah. I think the Billboard Awards did everything right that the Grammys did wrong. You know what I'm saying? Especially like mm. giving so much love to all these beautiful black artists, and then giving them so many awards. And I think the most awarded artist of the night, The Weeknd, who wasn't even nominated for one Grammy this year, and he deserved it. He deserved it. All right, you guys. All right, you guys. I, I really wish that we could keep chatting about this, Leah, but we want to thank you so much for getting into the mix with us tonight. Yeah. And it's always a pleasure to have you here. It was so great to have you back. So make sure that you guys go check out her new podcast. So that's what we're doing on Apple Podcasts. We'll make sure to put the link in our Instagram bio. And you got to follow her on Instagram for all of her great Leah's Lemonade interviews. But we do have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back right here on Fox Soul with more of the mix. Help her get it done. Welcome back to the mix, everybody. Okay, real quick, I have to give a huge congratulations to our showrunner, Miss Jill King, because today she found out she is nominated for an Emmy for uh, outstanding yeah. informative talk show for producing the uh, for producing uh, Red Table Talk. <laughs> I'm so incredibly proud of her. She is amazing. She's the best to do it. Okay, I bet your showrunner is good at songs. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Almost out of time, but I wanted to give J. Cole some more roses because he just became the first rapper to have all six of his studio albums go number one, baby. And he also broke Spotify one day streaming record. He's just out here doing it, man. He's killing the game. So I had to get that shout out in before we ended the show tonight. Well, you know, with that, Anton, I'm just going to go ahead and give Nikki one more shout out as well, because she's breaking records, too. Her video for Anaconda has recently surpassed one billion streams on YouTube, making her the first female rapper with a solo song to reach that milestone. So shout out to Nikki and all the barbs. I think I'm low-key a barb, too. But we got to get out of here, you guys. But we want to thank Pink Sweats and Leah Henry for getting into the mix with us tonight. And make sure you keep it locked right here for the Tammy Mac Late Show coming up next. But first... It's time for another Fox So Deal. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week, baby. Yeah. yeah.